Welcome back to another Space News Update. It's been another great week for India with Chandrayaan-3 rising ever higher and trials for their Gaganyaan crew module test platform taking place. ESA's JUICE is now fully commissioned and ready for deep sleep on its way to Jupiter. Black Arrow Space Technologies complete a second stage engine test and a Bronze Age burial site is found near Saxivord. So stick around and let's get going. Alright everyone, welcome back. We start this week with an update on India's Chandrayaan-3 moon mission. Launching from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre on the 14th of July, Chandrayaan-3 lifted off aboard the ISRO's LVM-3 Mark IV rocket designed for the moon's south pole, and soon afterwards entered Earth orbit. Over the past week, a series of orbit-raising manoeuvres have been carried out. Five orbit-raising manoeuvres have been successfully completed to date, taking Chandrayaan-3 to a 127,609 km by 236 km Earth orbit. From here, C3 will continue to orbit the Earth until August the 1st, when, with all systems checked and verified, it will be time for that all-important translunar injection or TLI, you know, the coolest part of any moon mission. Orbital insertion is planned for around late August, at which point a series of lunar descent manoeuvres are planned to gradually lower C3 to a 100km circular polar orbit, with a Vikram lander detaching thereafter, and, hopefully this time around, making a soft landing on the lunar surface. Check out last week's video for a full rundown of the mission, including all of the science experiments that are on board, the lander, the rover, and the propulsion module itself. Now, that's not all India has been up to this week. Not only are they embarking on another moon mission, but they are also hard at work on their biggest project to date, the Gaganyaan Human Spaceflight System. First announced way back in 2006, Gaganyaan will see three crew members launching on board a modified LVM-3 rocket and brand new orbital crew module to a 400km Earth orbit for three days. The orbital module looks very much like the Artemis Orion module, with crew capsule and service module housing all of the life support, propulsion, avionics and power systems for the spacecraft. In 2014, a boilerplate Gaganyaan crew capsule performed a successful launch and suborbital re-entry test with a successful test of the launch abort system coming four years later. The parachute system was also tested last year, with a 5-ton mass taken to an altitude of 2.5 kilometers and dropped from the sky. Now, this past week has seen hot fire testing taking place of the service module propulsion system in its final iteration, successfully putting the five liquid Apogee motors and 16 RCS motors through their paces in routine operation scenarios. Five further tests are planned to cater for both nominal and off-nominal scenarios ahead. Recovery trials also took place this past week at the Indian Naval Harbour, with a crew module demonstrator being used to refine the recovery procedures required from the Indian Navy. All going well, an uncrewed demonstration flight is expected to take place in early 2024, with a crewed mission coming hopefully later that year or into early 2025. Now, before we move on, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for future space news updates. And you can also support me on Patreon by hitting the link in the description below. Now, this past week saw ESA's JUICE spacecraft reach the end of near-Earth commissioning, with all systems looking good. All of the onboard instruments have been tested, including that pesky RIME antenna, and JUICE is now ready for its cruise to Jupiter. To do that, it's going to be placed into a kind of hibernation mode. After all, it does have another 8 years left until it reaches our solar system's largest planet, but a series of instrument checks are planned along the way to ensure that all systems are functioning nominally before its date with destiny. The first of those checks will be carried out in January 2024, when it will be over 34 million kilometres from Earth and around 133 million kilometres from Jupiter. Remember, JUICE is going to be looking at three of Jupiter's icy moons, Ganymede, Europa and Callisto, searching for liquid water beneath their icy crusts, looking for signs of life, looking at why they are so unique, and answering some questions about the massive gas giant Jupiter itself. JUICE is now 3% of the way into its mission, as you can see from the updated JUICE bar, and don't forget you can also keep track of JUICE's progress by going to ESA's website. Next, 
Black Arrow Space Technologies of Swindon, England are emerging as a genuine third player in the UK's burgeoning rocket manufacturing scene. This past week saw a second stage engine test being carried out. No video has been released yet, only this photograph here, but I am very, very excited to see more information as it comes out. And Black Arrow Space Technologies, or BLAST for short, have said that more information is coming soon. What we do know is that their aim is to deliver accessible rise to space for the small sat industry through a flexible system that can see launches taking place from theoretically anywhere in the world. And they have a highly experienced team behind them, including Paul Williams, who previously worked on the Vega launch vehicle, and Professor Gary Savage, who worked on the Space Shuttle program. Black Arrow are aiming for both sea launch and reusability, with a two-stage rocket that can place 500 kilograms into low Earth orbit. Engines are supplied by DLR of Germany for the first stage, with their 60 kN carbon fiber black engine. And the upper stage 50 kN engine is supplied by Argo Navis Aerospace of New Zealand. Finally, a discovery was made near the Saxavord spaceport up in Shetland this past week. A team of archaeologists from AOC Archaeology found deposits of burnt bone and quartz during early excavations on Unst, suggesting that an area near to the spaceport was once used as a Bronze Age cremation site. It's long been suspected that Unst held Bronze Age remnants, given Shetland's fantastic ancient history, the most famous site being Jarlshof in Sumbera. It contains remains of structures dating back to 2500 BCE and is famous for those Bronze Age oval houses, as well as Iron Age wheelhouses and Viking longhouses. Now it seems that Unst itself can lay claim to being settled from Bronze Age to Space Age, and given that the dig has only just begun, I wouldn't be surprised if more fantastic finds are around the corner. What we do know is that Debbie and Frank Strang, the owners of Saxavord, have said that ongoing work at the site is not going to be impacted by these archaeological digs, so we can enjoy the past and the future as they are both uncovered and take shape along the way. I've been Tom June, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.